equal cap capacity to identify what are the things you can do to help your part of cyberspace. And I look forward to learning more about that in the months ahead. Thank you very much. Well, Howard, thank you very much indeed for that overview and your perspective, your unique perspective on the topic to get this uh, meeting off to a good start. May, oh, by the way, Howard will be staying on the panel for the discussion subsequently. Thank you very much. May I now introduce uh, Jim Quigley, who is the Chief Executive Officer of Deloitte Worldwide. Again, his biography is in the material. He was formerly Chief Executive Officer of Deloitte US. Um, he has spent 35 years with the group and is a member of a number of important international organizations and committees specializing in financial and global economic issues. So, Jim, welcome. Well, good morning. And Chairman Finley, thank you for that introduction. And Howard, thank you for your leadership, uh, for your commitment, and for your public service. My organization, Deloitte, is actively engaged in shaping the discourse around cybersecurity on a number of levels throughout the world. Lieutenant General Harry Radeke, whom some of you have already met, spearheads many of our initiatives as the chairman of the Deloitte Center for Cyber Innovation. And Mark Layton heads Deloitte's Global Risk Services Practice. I'm delighted both of them are, uh, are with us here today. This morning, I will add a few thoughts to our collective conversation, speak about global enterprise role in cybersecurity, and look at that role from three different perspectives. Where does the international business community stand relative to cybersecurity as a risk? What is the unique relevance of that risk to the global enterprise? And most importantly, what kind of integrated response to that risk is warranted, if not demanded? As we heard at last night's dinner and the excellent panel discussions, there's a wide range of awareness and understanding of cybersecurity as a risk. And I believe the option finder that we all participated with demonstrated that not only is there a wide range of views and understanding broadly, but even among those of you who are committed and, and come to this event. Probably the safest comment I could make today would be to tell you, okay, sure, the global private sector enterprise agrees that there's a general pervasive need for a deeper understanding about cybersecurity and more education about it. Or I could tell you that we're all in the same boat together. But this would shortchange two realities. First, the international business community is, with a few exceptions, lagging the international military and political sectors when it comes to addressing cybersecurity, even in industries that know about the risk. For example, Deloitte's 2009 Global Security Survey of the Technology media, and telecommunications industry found 60% of responding IT leaders believe they are falling behind or still catching up to known security threats. That's worse than 49% who felt that way in the previous year's survey. That's not a good trend. And the second reality is being in the same boat is small comfort unless we know the boat is moving effectively through calm and protected waters. So let's take just a moment and ask why much of the global enterprise is behind the curve on cybersecurity. I believe it's because cybersecurity, the cybersecurity threat is both a relatively new risk classification and one that is growing and changing so quickly it's almost like cancer. It can spread dangerously and require continual and sometimes aggressive treatment. And we haven't figured it out the way that we like to figure things out, with rigid assessments, with precise solutions, and with clear processes and proven tools. So yes, I would say the aggregate global enterprise is committed to gaining a deeper understanding of cybersecurity risks. But a commitment to awareness and education is only a small first step. And that brings me to my next point. The unique relevance of, of cybersecurity risk to the global enterprise means that we, the international corporate sector, must be advocates for change and action, and we must shoulder 
a large share of the responsibility for the overall response to the threat. The battle will not be ours alone, and we'll get to that in a minute. And there's no question that global co-ownership co across political, governmental, geographic, and business interests will be essential to meaningful progress. But let me share three reasons why the cybersecurity risk is critically important to international business. One, information is our de facto global currency. Two, private industry has significant ownership of and responsibility for the global information infrastructure. And three, cybersecurity risks threaten the productivity and competitive gains that technology has enabled. Let's take those one at a time. To say that information is the currency of international business is just another way of stating the obvious. In a global marketplace, the flow of virtually all goods and services is uniquely tied to the flow of information about those goods and services. When you ask Fred Smith, the founder of FedEx, what kind of business is he in, he doesn't tell you he runs a courier or package delivery business, and that he'll tell you that FedEx is in the information business and that the information about a package's origin, location, destination, delivery time, price, and costs are in many ways more important than the package itself. Or consider any large consumer retailer, from Pantaloon, India's largest retailer, to Walmart, with stores and operations in 15 countries, from Brazil to the United Kingdom, and joint ventures in China, Mexico, and Japan. Almost everything about their operations, from inventory to supply chain to transaction processing, is linked and tracked and acted on digitally. An example of cyber theft that some of you may already know involved the discount retailer TJX, the parent company of such stores as TJ Maxx, Marshalls, and Home Goods. In a significant data breach lasting over 18 months in 2006 and 2007, 45 million credit and debit cards were stolen from its systems by an unknown number of intruders. The resu the re this resulted in huge financial problems, bad press, and significant downtime for the parent company. TJX reported that it had set aside $118 million to cover the cost of settlements as a result of its lax security. In my business, professional services, the relationship between value and information is practically symmetrical, and much of the information at the foundation of our work is confidential and proprietary, relating to fundamental business processes, capital market transactions, reporting, and strategy. So if the information is compromised, the relationship with clients, and alongside it, the reputation of my enterprise would also be compromised. My point is, whatever business you're in, from finance to entertainment to energy, you're really in two businesses, the one it says on your business card and the information business. And for the international enterprise, information is the global currency. Unfortunately, the bad guys know this. In 2008, the global cost associated with st stolen data was estimated at $1 trillion, and that figure may be grossly underestimated. Research that Deloitte published relative to the 2010 CFO Cybersecurity Watch Survey concludes that cybercrime is a more common and larger threat than is generally realized, and that criminal innovation and techniques have outpaced traditional and current security models and detection technologies. I'm sure many of us have received the annoying letter or disturbing phone call from a bank or agency seeking data verification or inquiring about a financial transaction. And more often than any of us would like, we discover fraudulent charges on our credit cards or debit cards. The second uniquely relevant characteristic of cybersecurity risk to global enterprise has to 